In three decades of keeping all different types of tortoises, there's one group of them that has proven to be the easiest and the hardiest. These animals, when they're set up properly, can actually be left to their own devices. And believe it or not, they can be housed almost anywhere year round outdoors in the United States. In this video, we're gonna go over my top five pick of those best choice tortoises. In three decades of keeping turtles and tortoises, it comes down to these five animals right in front of me that are my top pick for the easiest ones to be able to handle properly in captivity. We've got our hermit's tortoises right here, the western and the eastern, the Russian tortoise, the Ibera Greek, which is correctly referred to as the Asia Minor tortoise, believe it or not, and of course, the marginated tortoise. All five of these animals belong to the famous genus Testudo. Those are the European or Mediterranean tortoises. And for thousands of years, these animals have played a vital role in the reptile community across the world. One common misconception that we come across in herpetoculture is when people refer to these animals as breeds. These are not breeds, folks. Thank you, sweetheart. That's beautiful. These are in fact species and then subspecies fall underneath that. So this is a higher level. This is nature. Species are created by nature, whereas breeds like our dogs, Gilligan and Angus, please give Angus a warm welcome to our family, by the way, are breeds. Those are dogs just like cats and there are breeds of chickens, for example. They're essentially man-made because breeds are a group of animals that are bred for preservation, for specific traits. So there you have it. There it is. First up, we've got the Russian, also known as the Horsefields tortoise, Testudo horsefieldii. This tortoise has been imported into various countries, including the United States, in droves. Tens of thousands of these animals are ripped out of nature every single year and sent to the US. We're not gonna get into that in this video, but the fact of the matter remains, these tortoises are here and they're here to stay. They are one of the most popular and most common tortoises in herpetoculture, and you can even find them at PetSmarts, which is really unfortunate. But folks, don't follow their info on how to keep them. We have a website called hermanihaven.com that covers all you need to know about the proper care and understanding of the European and Mediterranean tortoises. Russian tortoises are extremely temperature tolerant. They can go way, way up to the hundreds and way, way down to single digits and even below as long as they're provided with a safe place to hibernate. These tortoises have insane winters where they come from in nature and summers are very hot and dry. In some cases here in the United States, that is easy to replicate. One thing about the Russian tortoise that really needs to be taken into consideration, these things dig. And when I say they dig, it's pretty insane just how far they can go. When these things disappear on us for the winter, they're three feet or more below the surface. I am not kidding. Sometimes in the past we've thought, did we lose them? Are they gone forever? But then once those temperatures become favorable again, they show up. I find Russian tortoises to be a little less personable than the other animals I'm showing you in this video, but they are by no means dull and they learn to associate you as a food source and they will even run up to you. Russian tortoises are fully grown at between five inches and somewhere around eight inches for males and females. Yes, they do get larger than what PetSmart is going to tell you, but that's still a very manageable size, especially for an animal that can be housed outdoors year round in many areas of the United States. And you will find that in this video, that's the common denominator here. These animals fare well outdoors 365 days a year in many, many areas of the United States. Next up, one of my personal favorites, the marginated tortoise, Testudo marginata. It's no surprise why these tortoises get their name. They have a beautiful bell shape or skirt to the rear marginal scoots of the carapace. They really are unique and they're very elongate shape too, whereas normally with turtles and tortoises, we associate them as being round or more oval. These guys are actually like a trapezoid. It's really, really cool. And that skirt is really pronounced, especially in males. And they are just one of the most unique looking tortoises out there. As you can see, when they become older adults, they actually become almost solid black. Some actually are black. Now, the marginated tortoise is typically considered the largest of the European tortoises, so that may be a challenge for some. This is a fully grown reproductive female that's not gonna get any bigger, and right now she's around 11 inches, but males and some females can hit 14, 14 and a half. And we used to have a male that was 15 inches long. He was a massive tortoise. So you can see some of these animals in sizes are comparable to species like leopard tortoises, okay? And 
that can be a challenge for some depending on what you have at your disposal to house them. The good news about marginated tortoises, which is why they're included in this top five easiest, is because they, like the Russian and the other animals in this video, can spend their lives outdoors year round in extremely harsh winters and very hot summers. They are just bulletproof animals for the most part when you set them up correctly, and these guys have a wonderful personality as well. They are aggressive breeders. Males will fight like a lot of the testudo species do, but if you set them up in a large enough pen, the males will actually benefit from that seasonal combat and they will continue to be reinvigorated to breed, which is what you want if you are going to try to reproduce these animals. These tortoises lay large clutches of eggs. Some of our marginateds will lay between three and four clutches per season and sometimes up to nine eggs in each clutch. Six is typical, but that's a lot of babies from one single female. And you can see right here, she's got a wonderful personality. She has no problem with Ella touching her and she's even checking her out. They're just super brawny, awesome animals, and every spring we look forward to them coming up out of the ground and greeting us. One other really interesting thing about the marginated tortoise that can help you to separate them from other testudo species is when you look at the plastron, you will notice dark chevrons or triangular markings on an otherwise light colored plastron. I don't want to keep her like that for long. The only other member of the testudo genus that has those chevrons is the Egyptian tortoise, but obviously massive size difference between the two of those and also difference in care. But when these tortoises, the marginateds, are younger, they tend to have that light and dark colored shell, just like a Herman's or a Greek tortoise would, or even a Russian tortoise. So when you look at the bottom, those triangular markings or chevrons is what's gonna be your indicative trait to separate them from the other testuda. The next tortoise up is a total pig when it comes to appetite. This is what we refer to in the hobby as the Ibera Greek tortoise, but it is more correctly called the Asia Minor tortoise, Testudo Graica Ibera. It is a member and a very, very well-known member of the Greek tortoise family, Testudo Graica. Now the reason I selected the Ibra is because this tortoise, in terms of care and personality, really sticks out from the rest of the Greek tortoise crowd, okay? We keep just about all the different types of Greek tortoises that are available, but when it comes to the Ibra, they really are night and day. These animals, in my opinion, should be classified as a full species. Everything from their reproductive rate to their personality, head shape, and size is vastly different from most of the other Greek tortoises. Now, when it comes to the testudos, there's always a big size spectrum. We just showed you the marginated tortoise, which is historically referred to as the largest of the European tortoises. Well, that animal that I showed you isn't gonna get any bigger, and she's actually neck and neck with Dev here. Dev is one of our largest Ibra. Dev's name is, in Turkey, it means giant, because she is a giant. She's 10.2 inches, so she is neck and neck with that marginated. So really, who's bigger? Because this animal has a more obvious pitch or peak to her shell and a broader, wider shell. So if you ask me, she is the largest animal, but she's not the largest animal I'm gonna show you in this video. These animals are inquisitive and they do not hesitate to run to you once they become familiar with you. They eat and eat and eat and they will clear out an entire patch of clover in minutes. One thing that's worth noting about Ibra, they tend to be very aggressive. Both males and females will do all of the same characteristics in terms of behavior where they bite each other, they ram each other, they mount. So a large enclosure is very important for these. They are unbelievably hardy. In my opinion, they are the most cold and heat tolerant of all the Testudo. These tortoises truly are designed for ultimate survival and there's really no surprise why. They kind of just own everything and if you keep them, you'll know exactly what I mean. Okay, now we've got Herman's tortoises, specifically the Eastern Herman's tortoise. Now you'll notice I have two tortoises right here. The Eastern Herman's tortoise is classified as Testudo hermani botgeri, but a third subspecies, because we're gonna get to the second one after this, is the Dalmatian tortoise. Now for the longest time, this tortoise was accepted as a valid subspecies, which was Testudo hermani hersegovinensis. Say that five times fast. Well, 
They have demoted this now to just a geographical variant of the Eastern, so I'm including it here in one of the top choices. Basically to show you guys size differences. The care for these animals is identical. Their diet is identical. Their reproduction is slightly different where the Eastern Hermit's tortoise lays more eggs, sometimes six or more, whereas the Dalmatian usually tops out at between three and four. There's variation there, but you'll notice a big size difference here. These are two animals that are not growing anymore, and you'll see that the Eastern right here, next to the Dalmatian is quite larger. It also has a pretty different shape. There are other traits that you guys can learn about on our hermanihaven.com website, but these are both considered now Eastern Hermit's tortoises. We don't keep them together. We keep them separate because personally, I feel that these are valid as a subspecies. That's a topic for another day. Eastern Hermit's tortoises are probably the most common of the testudo species in herpetoculture today, and they kind of always have been. Sadly, like Russians, they still continue to be imported in droves, but their survival rate overall is higher. For whatever reason, these animals appear to be more robust and able to withstand these situations that they unfortunately have to go through. There are far more captive bred Eastern Hermit's tortoise babies in captivity than there are Russians today, and that pretty much goes for anywhere. Eastern Hermit's tortoises are wonderful animals. They are absolutely beautiful, super hardy, and again, common denominator, they can stay outdoors year round in most areas of the United States and even in other countries. In some locations where these tortoises naturally occur, like Ibra, they are covered in snow for months before they emerge in spring. We don't even get that down here in South Jersey. They are very prolific breeders, as I stated, a lot of captive bred babies out there, and truly rewarding to work with, not hard to come by. But folks, just like all the testudo I'm showing you in this video, for the most part, they are well represented in captivity, and there's absolutely no reason for them to be imported from the wild anymore. Always get your hands on captive bred animals only. When it comes to the Eastern Hermit's tortoises, there is some size difference there. The more typical Eastern here is fully grown at between six and eight inches respectively, whereas the Dalmatian is full grown at between four and six. But larger examples do exist. You might recognize this giant Hermit's tortoise from previous videos of ours. This is Athena. She is the record-breaking size Eastern Hermit's tortoise for the United States of America. There is no known larger example today. If there is, let us know in the comments and please be able to show us proof because we're dying to see if there are larger ones. Now, in other countries, there are larger examples than this. Folks, the issue here is that dealers that sell these animals have been lying about how big they get for ages. You might see it in PetSmart, you might see it in Petco, you might see it at reptile shows where they say, Eastern Herman's tortoise, adult pairs, four or five inches, these are fully grown. No, they are not. Eastern Hermit's tortoises, even Dalmatians, will get larger than that. And Athena right here, who is ancient, beats all those records that we know of here in the States. Athena measures 11.2 inches. She is an absolute giant. We have absolutely no idea just how old Athena is, but she definitely is ancient. And who knows, maybe she's got several more decades left in her because folks, all of these Testudo tortoises can live to be more than 100 years old. My number one pick is really no surprise at all if you know us well here. It is the Western Hermans tortoise Testudo Hermani Hermani. This animal happens to be one of the most endangered reptiles of Western Europe, and it is classified by the IUCN Red List as endangered, unlike all the other tortoises that we just showed you. Now, I've used a little bit of coconut oil on all the tortoises in this video so you guys can really see the colors and markings because that's really crucial to properly identifying them. It's not something that should be done all the time. And in fact, when kept in a well-constructed, well-planted pen, they will naturally have a waxy appearance to their shell like they do in nature from constantly rubbing against vegetation. My history with Western Hermit's tortoises goes all the way back to 1991, and throughout the years, they have been the sole animal that I have done most of my research and work on. When it comes to the size of Western Hermit's tortoises, there's a little bit of variation there. This is an adult female who produces eggs and will not get any bigger, and she is from the mainland of Italy. Western Hermit's tortoises are found in various areas of Italy, France, and Spain, including the Balearic Islands, and their appearance and their size differs. I chose to use one of our mainland Italian animals to show you the really typical standard size. This female is just under six inches. Males are only about four to four and a half. 
Some locales get up to eight inches, but for the most part, this is your standard size. This is a super manageable and incredibly hardy and personable animal. So the hardiness of this little one is just as high as it is for that big Ibra or Marginated or even Athena, that giant Eastern Hermit's tortoise as you all got to meet. There are several defining traits that help separate the Western Hermit's tortoise from other Hermit's tortoises. And in fact, years back, this animal was almost accepted as a full species. It's been tentatively rejected and will be looked at again, but this really is a different animal in terms of reproduction, looks, and even the shape of the head. The bone structure is different from that of an Eastern Hermit's. Won't get carried away, you guys can use that website again to go ahead and look at all that and we will be doing a really in-depth video about these guys which I'm really excited about. But the Western Hermit's tortoise again is an animal that can live outdoors year-round in most parts of the United States of America right up here in New Jersey and even up into New York and Pennsylvania if they are provided with the proper protection during the winter they can stay out no matter how cold it gets and if you live in a place like Arizona you have the opposite issue maybe you have to just make sure that they don't overheat in the summer but they are capable of withstanding some pretty high temperatures. Because let's face it, Italy gets pretty darn hot and in certain regions, it also gets very cold. So think outside the box when you're thinking of these reptiles because cold is actually beneficial to them and their annual reproductive cycle, believe it or not. The reason I've picked the Western Hermit's tortoise to be number one is because it has that compact size, incredible color, but it has the capabilities of all the other tortoises I showed you in this video. It is just as hardy, it is just as easy to maintain, and it is also an extremely responsive animal. But when it all comes down to it, you get a super duper robust, insanely colorful animal. Tortoises we've discussed in this video truly are incredible and extremely hardy, and even the babies can be that way. Contrary to popular belief, the babies can start a life outdoors and live that way depending on where you are in the United States. Works beautifully right here in South Jersey. And what happens is, by living a life outside from the get-go, they inevitably become accustomed to the seasons and know how to respond. They also know how to respond to extreme temperature fluctuation in both summer and winter. So how is it that these tortoises are able to survive here? This is New Jersey. You guys probably think it's always cold and there's no way to do that here. Well, we get all four seasons and yeah, it might be cold in the winter, but it's also really hot in the summer. And that's what these tortoise species experience in nature. In fact, some of the testudo will hibernate for nearly close to a half a year. In some regions where they come from, it's even colder. A lot goes into the planning of the pens that we keep them in, proper plant life, cold frames, which we've discussed in other videos, sun placement, well-drained soil, all that kind of stuff is important. And if you guys would like to see a video on how to properly care for them, we are planning on doing that. When these tortoises are provided with all the basic needs, they can really do everything on their own. Of course, you still have to feed them, but the fact of the matter remains, they know how to respond to all of these seasons. They have natural triggers that they go through. Even these little babies, which have not spent a single day of their lives indoors once they hatched. By choosing these tortoise species, you're able to set them up in a naturalistic manner where they can live as naturalistic of a life as possible. That's a beautiful thing because folks, no matter how many times they're bred in captivity, they're wild animals at heart. They know what to do when we provide them with the basic needs. And in a sense, they actually require our absence. They just need to be fed, they need to have the sun, and they need to have shelter, and a couple other specifics. There's nothing wrong with any other kind of tortoise though. I've chosen these as the easiest choices because typically they are able to be set up and left alone. But hey, you guys have seen in our videos, we do keep them all and each one is beautiful and each one is amazing. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments and I'd love to hear your ideas.